secure cell ssh right so uh, what is the purpose of this ssh to take the cli base remote of your servers so in company you definitely when you, when you will start work on this so what you will see you are not going to access the machines physically physically means uh in case of virtual machine you do not you will not go to the console and access the virtual machine or in case of physical machine you will not go to your console and access the physical machine every time what you need to do in case of any troubleshooting means if there will be any problem related to the network or your machine is not reachable or you will not able to connect with your servers remotely then only you need to go to the console of your virtual machine or your physical machine and need to fix it out otherwise most of the time most of the time you are going to access your servers remotely with the help of means by cli with the help of ssh right so ssh is a is a remote protocol which allow you to take the remote of your server uh, let me connect my pen tab and let me tell you how it works along with you net other than ssh in case of uh, linux we also have another another service which allow you to take the remote that is telnet but the problem of telnet is it is very very insecure means all the traffic which is uh, which will be transferred or created with the help of telnet that can be easily hackable by the hackers your hackers can easily uh capture the username and password of your servers because the packets which will be transferred with the help of telnet they are always in normal text format so there are many many tools like wireshark which can be which can be used in between and can find out the username and password right so your security can be compromised in that case now why so telnet is uh, broken by the corporate Yes, yes, that's why right. telnet is blocked in the corporate due to this reason. So your SSH is going to fix that solution. In case of SSH, whenever you create the connections, that connections are very encrypted, right? So it always transfer the data from a secure tunnel, from a secure tunnel. which does not allow the intruders to hack any data or any credentials over the network right so how this ssh will work let me tell you see let's up yeah so jab hum install karte hain the first time wo koi linux to us time hum wo ssh ko wo block wale ek option aata hai Right. Was it for user? Only it's only for one user. Means you are not allowing root to take the SSH. Otherwise, SSH service is there, right? So, if a user can be blocked, can be blocked. Normally, what should we do? User can be blocked. User can be always enabled. We should always enable the SSH for user, but block for the root. Block for the root. Yes. I take the remote from user, and then you can switch back to the root if required. Otherwise, do not allow the SSH from root. No, no. Means if you are trying to access your servers by with the help of root, and in that case, if if your root password will be compromised. then your system will be will be vulnerable right that's why keep safe your root root credentials root use uh, root password and access your servers with the help of local user and then do sudo space su hyphen root to get the access of root right okay i was telling you how this ssh is working so let's suppose this is a server right and let me take as a server one and you are sitting here right this could be window this could be linux as well this could be unix as well anything right 
Windu, Linux, Unix, or Mac, anything, any kind of operating system is there. And you want to make a connection between this server and with you. Right? No, now how this thing will work? See, this is server, and on this server, there should be a package called open SSH hyphen server. This package should be installed. And by default, in Linux, this package is always installed in your system. But I will show you how you can verify that this software or this package installed in your system or not. Okay. But again, this is a default package which you will get when you installing the installing your Linux operating system. In case that is that could be a chance of I think 0.1%. If this package is not there, then possibly we need to install it, it as well. Again, how to install that? We're going to learn in the uh, package management chapter. But as I tell, as I'm telling you, means this package will be mostly available in your Linux operating system when you will install your your OS. So this is what one package should be should be available on that server. There should be one service that is SSHD, right? If you remember, for network we have network manager. Okay. So similarly for SSH, the SSHD service should be running. It should be running. If it is not running, we need to start it. Network manager service should also be running because if this service is not there, then your system will not have any IP address, right? Or you will, your system will not able to connect anywhere in the network, right? Your system should have IP address. Means this server should have IP address. So let's assume 172.24.0.133 is my IP address. There should be an IP address. There should be user exist on this server, right? So it could be your local user. It could be your root as well, right? But as few minutes before we were discussing, we should block the remote access from root. But that is the another thing. But we should have any user on on server side, root or local user, and it should have the password. It should have password. This user should have password, or we need to make a key based authentication. So that we learn in few minutes, key based authentication. So these are some pre requirement means requirement on the server. We need to fulfill. We need to install. We, there should be package service should be running. Network manager should be running. Uh, IP there that server should have IP address. The server should have uh, any user or root user, and that should have password. Right. This will be another option we'll discuss later on. So these things should be available on server one. Now is a client means from where you want to access server one. So in that case, in case of Linux, Unix, or Mac, or Window means in every case we should have SSH client, right? SSH client, and in case of in case of this Linux, Unix, and Mac, the name of our SSH client is Open SSH iPhone clients. This is the name of package for Linux, Unix, and Mac. This should be installed on your system. And if you have window, there are many softwares coming means in the market which can be used as an uh, SSH client like Putty, Amputy, Mobile Xterm. So there are different different package or software available for window which you can download and install in your system once you complete this requirement as well then we want to connect from the server via ssh so what we need to do we need to write ssh from client side ssh username username at the rate ip address or host name or host name and it will ask for your credentials for the username and then after you will be able to connect to the servers right so this is how we will make able to connection between the remote servers and and client right now let me show you these things on the system so for this example or for this 
uh, what we are going to do use. So we are going to use this host one as an open SFS server, right? Let me change the host names of this machine. I'm going to set it to server uh, host one. Okay. So first thing is we need to check that open SH hyphen server package is there. So that is the command to see RPM query open SSH hyphen server. So this is the command to check do this machine has this package or not. So I have this package and I told you mostly this package will be available in when you installing your Linux operating system. Then we have, we need to check the SSHD service. That is how you can check the SSHD service and it should be running. So it is running. Then we have, uh, the network manager service should also be running. So as we already did all those things few means in the last class, so this should be running and, and it is running in my system as well. So network manager. It is running now and I should have IP address. So definitely I have IP address because just few minutes back we set the IP address as well. If I want to check for a specific LAN card, so I can put the name of LAN card as well. So this is what the IP address I have. And I should have user as well. So how I can check the user, etc, password. So I have many users are available there, right? So let me set the password because I'm forget the, what is the password of these users. So I have reset the password for Deepak. So if you remember, definitely you do not need to change the password, but if you not, then you can change the password as well. So here you can check the username and then after you can set the password as well. So, once sir, when it, sir, when you will change the password, it will not ask for the old password, right? It will ask. If you are setting the password with root, then it will not ask. Okay. Okay, so password has been set. Now, as per our discussion, now we need another machine, right? From where we can access that. So, let's take example for from Linux first of all, then we'll see from Windows as well. So this is my another Linux machine, okay? And here my package should be open SSH hyphen clients. This package should be there and it is there now, right? And uh, obviously, okay, okay, okay. However, it is very logical, but but we need to write it. This machine should also have the IP address, definitely, right? And same range of IP address or we should have the gateway. Right, so we already have this IP address on this machine, 57, right? So if once we check this package and IP address, then we have a command called SSH and the username, username is Deepak, at the rate IP address of a machine or the host name of a machine. If if we are going with the host name, it should be make entry, we need to make entry in our host file as well, or it should be resolvable with the DNS. So at this moment, I don't think I have make entry in my host file. So let me access it IP address 172.24.0.133. Yes, so you can see here. <clears throat> so when you run this command, so what it is asking, it is asking that, it, it is saying that uh, the machine which you are trying to access I'm going to store the fingerprints. I am going to store the fingerprints of that machine. Do you want to save this or continue with this connection? So you can say yes or no. But for the benefit of getting yes, right? The benefit is now let's suppose if I press, press yes there, yes there, and it will ask for the Deepak password. So once I will give the, I will tell you what is the, what, what happened when I press yes. So when I press enter, I will give the password. Now I reach to the host one. Means now I access the machine remotely. So on the server side, if you will run W command 
or who command so it will tell you like uh, who has access your system deepak and if you run the who then it will tell you the ip address as well so from where your system is get access right so let me that this command as well so here you can see who remotely access your machine and now i can come back means log out from this remote session by using exit option okay now what happened with yes so whenever you press yes so on the client side there will be a directory created called dot ssh and this dot ssh has a file called known host and this known this known host file has the fingerprints the fingerprints of your server now what is the advantage of this fingerprints if you want to understand then let me bring up one more machine give me a minute what i can do what cut okay let me power it on this machine i'm going to tell you what is the advantage of that fingerprints it will take few minute okay meanwhile it will take some time to start it let's proceed for like next command meanwhile so that is how you can connect with the uh, connect with the user uh, from your server by using username at the right ip address you can also use root instead of user right and you need to give the password of root give the password of root once you will give the successful uh, give the password of root successfully you will able to enter that but if you're not able to access with root it means either you are not giving the correct password or the remote access from for root is disabled from the server side there could be any of the possibilities right but here i am giving the correct password it means remote access from root is blocked at this moment from the server how we can check that we will see later on right so for root we can give this root at the right ip address now let's suppose if i am i will not give any username what will happen in this case so if you will not give any username so by default it will take the user which is currently logged in in your system means i am logged in with root right so it will try to access the server with the help of root see root at the right is it let's suppose i am logged in with a student and i am trying to do ssh 172.24.0.133 it means what here i am not giving any username so by default it will try to access this ip address with the help of this username right again it asking for the fingerprints it will do yes and password and it will able to connect right but it is always recommended to use username before the ip address not mandatory but recommended why it is because let's suppose it could be possible in on your client machine there could be one user let me create one user user add test user right i have created this and when i switch to this test user and try to take the remote 172.24.0.133 it will i will press yes and this now it is asking for the password of test user right and it may or may not be possible this test user is available on server as well right it could be right test user should not it could be possible a test user is not available on the server as well that's why i'm saying it is recommended to mention the username whenever you are trying to take the ssh if you will not give any username it will take the default user by which you are currently logged in right but when you give the username it will access that server with that specific username okay so that is what one thing we need to remember okay let me see of oh, why i'm getting logged out from there let me see if that machine get powered on yes this machine is powered on now see what i'm kya yeah, kitan go ahead मल्टीपल सेशन फॉर दैट यूजर वैसे आपकी आवाज साफ नहीं आ रही आपके तो सॉरी क्या कह रहे हैं हाँ क्या पूछ रहे हैं 
पूछे हुए रहा हूँ की इसमें रिमोट सर्विसेज का कुछ फंडा रहता है अभी इंदौर में क्या होता है कि वो रिमोट सर्विस हमें एस एस एच डी ही तो रिमोट सर्विस है ना है ना जो भी हमने इनेबल किया था चेक किया था सारी चीजों को राइट ओके नाउ सी व्हाट व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू हियर सो हियर यू ट्राई टू एक्सेस योर रिमोट मशीन विथ वन थ्री थ्री राइट नाउ फॉर सम टाइम व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू आई एम गोइंग टू it's setting okay and or or nmcli connection so nmcli connection down and ens 160 i bring it down right there is no any ip address 133 on this machine now if you will see its ip address its ip address is 161 and i am going to set it to 133 now both thing can be happen one thing it could be intentional like let's suppose my older machine get decommissioned or getting removed from my network and we have created a new machine intentionally and set the same ip address another possibility is let's suppose uh, by by mistake we set it to uh, set the same ip address on other machine or the third condition could be there could be some other intruders or some some bad elements from your uh, network who intentionally set this ip address on their machine right there could be any three possibilities now in that case what will happen now the ip address of this machine is 133 now when you will try to take the remote see you will get a prompt that the fingerprints which was stored for this machine earlier is now changed are you aware about this if you are aware about this then remove the older fingerprints which is stored in uh, like in dot ssh means current the home directory of your user uh dot ssh and known underscore host remove the entry from this file and take the remote again that is what it is prompting you so if you are if you know yes it is intentionally someone has someone has reassign that ip to another machine you are good otherwise you need to investigate from the server side who who has changed it how it has been changed to another machine right you need to, you need to figure it out but if you are aware then what you need to do you need to go to this file and remove the entry for that specific ip address not everything because i only have the entry for that ip address that's why i remove everything but remove the entry for that ip address only and try to take this remote again it will ask you to accept that fingerprints and it is now stored there however deepak is not there that's why it is not allowing me to take that right if i will take it with the root So I think here root should be enabled. Yes, getting my point. So that is what the advantage of that fingerprint. So now let's suppose uh, again I will, I will do one thing. Nm cli nm pui. Let me get it back to their original IP. Back to this original IP and enable this as well. And I'm saying I connection up, right? Again, if you will try to access that machine again, so again give you this warning because obviously the fingerprints have been changed, is it? So you are aware about this. So go to the home directory. Inside that home directory, there will be SSH folder, known host file, and remove the entry remove the entry from that file and save it come out take the remote again and you are good to take that so that is what the advantage of this fingerprints it 
help you to identify the intruders or any any different server which get assigned with the same IP address. As I told you, it could be intentional, by mistake, in case of older server get decommissioned and new server has provisioned with the same IP, or some bad elements from your network are doing these activities. In any ways, you can able to find out all these things. Getting a point? Everyone, any questions? Yes, sir. Very good. Another thing is, till now, we accessed the remote server with the help of password. We have another approach by using key-based authentication. Now, what is the benefit of key-based authentication? So, in case of password, someone can see your password while typing on your keyboard, right? Maybe someone in the back end, back end who can see what, you, what the password you are typing, right? Uh, if you have, if you cannot remember the password, you may save this password in some of the uh, text file or somewhere. So that password can be hacked. That password can be seen by someone, right? So your password can be compromised if you're, if you are trying to authenticate every time with a password. So what the suggestion is, so instead of accessing the password, if you are frequently accessing any server, so instead of accessing those servers with their password, because the password can be compromised. So let's access those server with the help of key, right? In, in that case, we need to make authentication between server and client with key, right? And if we authenticate with key, in that case, it will not ask for any password. It will get authenticated with the key only, right? So we are going to see how we can make the key-based authentication or passwordless authentication. Both will be same. If someone is saying passwordless authentication, passwordless authentication, or key-based authentication, both are same thing. Means we can only connect with the SSH with a remote server without password when we have the key-based authentication or vice versa. Means if we have key-based key authentication, then we do not require password, right? Okay, before jumping to this part, I forget to show you how we can access the Linux machine from Windows client, right? So obviously we should, uh, we need to install some of the package like putty or something in your in your Linux machine. You can download it from the, the, from the Google, right? Putty for Windows and install it. And once you will install that putty in your in your window machine, then it it has SSH serial and other and all, all these things, right? So we need to select SSH and give the IP address 172.24.0.133, right? And open this. <coughs> See, it is also asking for the fingerprints, right? So once you will <coughs> accept this. So it will store the fingerprints on the Windows machine and it will give you at the login as. So I can give the username of the user and the password. That is how I can log into the Windows client as well. Right? So only you need to install the package. That's it. And after that, once you will open that putty, let me show it again. Once you will open this, you need to give the uh, IP address, open it. It will prompt you for the fingerprints if you are doing first time and then it will ask for the username and then password and you will make a successful connection right okay similarly you could have another other tools as well mobile x term and putty anything anything and everywhere the uh, steps will be very much similar now key based authentication now how we do key based authentication how it works okay let me Open one another board. So this is the server. Right? And this is the client. Again, it could be your Linux client, Windows client, and any anything. I'm taking example of Linux client. Right? Now you want to take the SSH of this server without password 
and with key base authentication. So what we need to do? Step first, you need to create key. Create key. You need to create key right here. And key will always create in the pairs. Means what? There will be one public key and another will be private key, always. Right? You cannot generate any single of them. Whenever you will generate, it will generate public and private both. Now, in once we will generate that key or create that key, then the second step, send that public key to the server, to a specific user, right? Send public key to user of remote server. Send that public key, right? And when you will send it, so on server side, it will store in home username dot ssh and authorized underscore key right so it will it should be stored it will be stored in this file once you will send it then the third step you can make a passwordless authentication that's it only two steps make passwordless authentication passwordless authentication so only two steps are there if you will able to successfully do that you will able to take the remote of your servers without any password right how we can do that let me show you so again this is my let me come out from this this is my host too okay ssh hyphen key gen that is what the command to generate the key press enter generating public and private key it will it, it is going to store the private key uh, the key private key in this location in your local machine root dot ssh h with the name of id underscore i'll say you can provide another name as well but i'm going with the default name at right now press enter it is asking for any password do you want to use any password for that key i'm saying no because i need passwordless so i will press enter enter double enter and my key has been generated and is stored in is stored in this root you can see this opt, a root dot ssh id underscore rsa is your private key and root dot ssh id underscore rsa dot pub is your public key. So if you see here, cat, uh, not etc, root dot ssh id underscore dot pub. So this is your public key and this is your private key. Now at in, by any way, you need to share this public key, this public key to your server side. Then how we can share this? Okay. So for that, you can, you can send it by email or you can send it to, um, if your company, if you have any ticketing tool, anything, you can upload this on that part, right? Any way you can, you can put this public key to that central location and it will be picked up by someone or to that server as well right so now let's suppose if i want to pick this to the server so how i can do that in that case what i will do i will go to the server one how i can copy it to okay let me let me copy that what i'm going to do 57 Fifty-seven slash root dot ssh id underscore dot. I'm copying this at this moment. As I'm telling you, this uh, like here I have the 
access of this machine, I access this client machine on my system and copying this key and sending it to, I'm going to send it to my server. So where I need to send it means where I need to keep this. I need to keep this in slash home slash Deepak dot SSH. Okay. There is no new SSH. SSH file is there. Why? Let me switch to Deepak. Okay. There is no new SSH file at this moment. No problem. I, <laughs> I will create that. MKDIR dot SSH. Right, and inside this SSH folder, I will create authorized RIJDD authorized underscore keys. That is the name of file, and we'll save this key there. Come out from here, change these permissions to 600 or 400. It is mandatory, it is mandatory, and change the permissions to 700 for SSH. These two things are mandatory. Once you are done with this, means now this SSH folder has authorized underscore key and it has the file and it has the content key, public key and if you will see the permissions, it has 400 and dot SSH has the permission is 700. Once you are done with this, now try to take SSH Deepak at the rate. See, it doesn't ask any password for me. See, SSH Deepak at the rate IP address. Done. Right? So that is what you need to perform when you want to make the password authentication. Another approach is what you can do SSH hyphen copy ID. SSH hyphen copy ID student at the rate IP address 172.24.133. What this command will do? This command will automatically create dot SSH folder, create authorized key, copy the content in authorized key change the permission, everything it will do, everything, right? If you will go to your server again and try to check this in, as you send it to a student, to try to check in slash home, the student dot SSH, it is there, and authorized key, it is there. And if you will see, content is automatically comes to this part. Means whatever I have performed there, that will be performed with this command. Uh, SSH hyphen copy ID. Right? And now if you will try to take the remote with a student, it should be without password. Yes, I am able to access it without password. Okay. Let me come back to server. Meanwhile, you can put your questions if you have. I'm just going to write the steps in your notepad. SSH key gen on client you need to generate on client SSH keygen and send the public key. The commands are written in your in your PDF as well. So send the public key to server to remote user of on server. Then what you need to do? You need to create a directory called dot SSH First of all, switch to that username, and then create home username dot SSH, change permission 700 slash home slash username slash dot SSH, and then uh, create a file slash home slash username slash dot SSH slash authorized underscore keys. Paste the public key. Right? Now 
सी एच मोड फोर जीरो जीरो एंड चेंज इट्स परमिशन राइट देन यू हैव चेंज सी एच मोड एंड चेंज द परमिशन सेव एंड एग्जिट ओके दैट इज हाउ यू कैन क्रिएट द पासवर्ड ऑफ ऑथेंटिकेशन with ssh